had to boolean in an object and and then uh, fix the edge loops and uh, clean it up. So here we have the teapot. So what I like to do when I do this is first turn on uh, wireframe unshaded. It's this button here. It's also under shading and it's called uh, wireframe unshaded or it's this button here. And it just shows you wireframe while you're in shaded mode um, without having the object selected. So let's create a cylinder that we will boolean in. And now what I like to do is when I create an object, I like to move it into place quickly. And instead of coming here and then moving into positioning, I just do this. I just hold V, which will take me, uh, press W first, go into the move tool. And if you hold V and just middle drag, it snaps to whatever you have, whatever you're uh, mousing over. And it just snaps it right on top of the teapot. So I'm, I kind of want it there, so I'll just, uh, I just move it there quickly. So now <clears throat> I'm gonna place the object. So I wanna find, uh, if there's no edge that you wanna place it on, there are a couple things to consider. So let's say if I'm placing it on, if I'm placing it here, I'm gonna look for an edge to, to put it on like that, see? I'm, I'm trying to match this. Uh, I'm trying to line up uh, this edge and this edge and then on the, uh, the same on the opposite side. This will help me a lot. Uh, when I'm combining, when I'm cleaning up the geometry. Now, if you don't have that, there are other things you can do. Let's say I have a, I want to place it right in the middle here, but I don't, I don't have an edge in the middle. So there's things you can do. Uh, one thing is if you think about, uh, if you just kind of consider how the cylinder is made, if you have something that's, uh, the subdivision axis on this one is 16, so it has a vertical and horizontal, has a 90 degree edge loops. Uh, which always have one in the middle here. But if you do something that is uh, that has a, a five in it, like a 20 division, um, well, not a 20, let's try something else. Hold on, let's do a 10 and see what that gives us. Just to see, see, you get this. Uh, you get a flat edge there, but it's it might not work for what we're trying to do. Yeah, it's not gonna be enough. So we need a little more. So let's let's add some more. Like that. So 14 works. See, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to stay symmetrical so that uh, the top and bottom have the same number, but also something that can fit into our object. So at 14, I have a face here that I can match to this face. Then I have a face here that I can match to this face. And then I also have this horizontal loop here. Uh, so these edges here will match as well. So it's it's you need to do a lot of kind of uh, thinking before you start uh, combining things just to make sure it's working. Now now I have these guys figured out. I need to figure out what else I can connect. So if I take this edge, I can put it into this vertex and this edge into this vertex, and then the top I can figure out how to do it later because if the if one side works, the other side usually will work. So I'm pretty happy with the placement here. Next thing, I'm gonna select both objects, go to Mesh, Boolean, Union, just to see uh, see if it works, and that works fine. So clear history, and now we need to, um, you clear history because see right here, you have poly cylinder and poly surface. The poly surface is our teapot, see I can actually move it. And the poly cylinder group is uh, our cylinder and the poly surface 4 is the new object that you've created. If you clear history, those two go away and we finalize. You want to do that because otherwise you might have problems with all that history there. So let's clean this up a little bit now. First thing I want to do is connect things that make the most sense. So we talked about this face uh, working, so we just do this. And then on the opposite side. And, that tool was, uh... and we're using the split polygon tool now here's the thing, there's two split polygon tools. There's an interactive split tool that they've added in Maya in 2012, which is really bad, it's horrible. And it's this tool right here, it's the orange one. And it's it's so bad, like it doesn't, a lot of times it doesn't work, I, I really do not like it. To get the normal, the old uh, split tool, you hold shift while you're mousing over the object and you right click and this will take you uh, into the uh, available tools uh, that you can use on this object. 
and it's if you go to the left you get the split tool and then if you go to the right you get the split polygon tool if you click it it drops into your toolbox down here from here you can middle mouse drag it into your shelf and there you have it so now you can just keep using it by clicking that button and if you double click it here you'll get the options for it so it's it's I think it's easier to use and it, uh, it works way better so now we need to uh, start connecting some of these edges so the things we planned before like that and I always do things that are the easiest uh, to figure out so like that way and then I'm gonna just delete some of these uh, edges that are here using delete edge uh, vertex which is under edit mesh delete edge vertex I just have a shortcut for it come up here uh, select this guy and this one delete edge vertex and then we can connect this so now we have an extra loop here this one that will become a problem so we need to remove it we can't just remove it because it's a big part of the object see it's looping all the way around like this we can't get rid of it so what we do is we divert it so we just take this and just let's come back into this tool turn off use snapping points this will uh, let us, uh, it will keep uh, the tool from snapping to, cor to corners. So like that. And once you put the edge there, you can move it after the fact by middle mouse dragging. So middle mouse uh, button is really important because I can place the point and then realize, you know what, this is not where I want it. Just middle mouse drag it and you can uh, edit where you placed it. See? and done and I press W to get out of the tool and that uh, get that lets me uh, do other things to my object instead of just keep putting edges on it and delete edge vertex get rid of those so now we looped it around our object now it's not an issue now we go back to the split tool connect here connect here the next thing uh, we come across is this this is really close to our cylinder so what I like to, and you see how this one uh, loops around. So what I like to do is I like to redraw that. So I'm gonna use the split tool again. I'm gonna come in here and just draw uh, a loop like this. I'm gonna come down here, do the same because I like to have evenly spread uh, loops. That's just me, but I think it actually helps your geometry. Like that. Now I can select, double click this loop and this one and do delete edge vertex. And there was something weird going on here. Let's get rid of that. So I can get rid of these two because they're not in the right place. And sometimes you wanna just select vert vertices just to check that everything is, is fine. Okay. Select the split tool again and then reconnect the missing edges oh, forgot this one so let's just get rid of this so that it's easier for us to see what's going on those missing edges you reconnected with the split polygon tool again? yes and let's see how that looks uh, that looks pretty good to me I like to soften my edges just to see what's going on so now to make this uh, to make this bevel uh, nice and clean, uh, the point of connection, I'm going to add a bevel. So come in here, set it to equal distance. Autocomplete's on because it's all quads. Unlike that. And you can see we never broke the curvature uh, of our object. Uh, we have a really clean connection. And clear history and there we have it now uh, I'll go over this uh, splitting um, copying something to the other side so let's say I want to mirror this to the other side a couple ways you can do it uh, you can split the object in half but sometimes your object could be really um, complicated uh, and it's a pain to split it to, uh, to move it to the side what I like to do is I'll find the center of my object, which is here, 
And I'm, what I'm doing now is I'm uh, in the move tool, press W to the move tool, uh, hold D and hold V. This will uh, take you into the uh, uh, the pivot edit mode and then V will snap to vertex. And then I'm just gonna middle drag until I get to the center of my object, which is here. Now I'm gonna duplicate it. And if I just uh, move it into the direction I wanna scale, uh, it'll do this. And I can just look in my channel box and see, okay, that's Z that's the, uh, that I need to scale in. So I'm gonna put negative one here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select this object, uh, go into face mode, and I'm gonna use shift greater than uh, to grow my selection like that until I uh, get uh, it, until I select enough faces that uh, I can kind of stitch it into place uh, on this side so basically uh, the these are all new what I selected so the opposite uh, is old so the opposite will stay so the, uh, the other stuff will stay so that I can actually take this and stitch it in so now i need to keep this section so i'm going to shift holding shift just drag selection over everything and it inverses my selection and then delete and then on this object i'll just select uh, this here grow my selection like that i'm going to delete the part that i'm going to stitch into so now i have this object with the hole cut out uh, where this new part will go in. Now I can do the same as if we mirror the object to the other side, which is uh, combine, uh, merge, and soften edge. Now I have this feature on both sides. Now you can also do it the old fashioned way, which is selecting half, deleting the half that you want to mirror to. Uh, then we make sure the pivot is at the center so if you're on center grid then you'll be in the center if not you hold d you hold v and you move middle drag into the center of the object Control d press r scale it this way and then in here just type in uh negative one in, in the uh, in the place where you see that it's changing the numbers there you go so select both of them uh combine merge and soften edge and it's the same thing now sometimes you might have something like this i'm going to select these vertices and just move them out maybe select some here and move them out uh, this happens a lot uh, so i'm going to go and say combine merge uh, soften edge and then i go to smooth and i notice i have this so to fix this, there are a couple ways. Uh, if you're on grid, you can snap uh, to grid. So select those objects. If I hold Control Shift and then right click, you want to make sure you're set to world, and you want to make sure keep spacing is is off. So make sure you're on world space and keep spacing is off. So Control Shift and then right click, and world keep spacing off like that. And then I can hold X and grab this arrow here and just move it and see how it snaps like that the other way to do it is to uh, make a uh, selection over the whole thing over the, the whole seam like this and if you hold the space bar go to uh, create the formers and create a cluster so the cluster will now uh, will now let you control um, control that and you can scale the cluster see like this if I'm scaling it here, you can see what happens to it. And you can see that scale Z is changing. If you type in zero, you're basically collapsing the cluster. And then you can then take the cluster, uh, grab this arrow, because you can move now that center, and just hold uh, X and you can snap it to the grid or uh, another point of reference you have for the center of the object. Uh, afterwards, just merge, soften edge, clear history, and you're good to go. Okay.